Welcome to this special edition by Union Solidarity International. Today we are talking to two great sisters, Zoe Mavrudi and Dora Economides, who are of course heavily and solely, should I say, responsible nearly for the Ruins documentary that USI has been pleased to contribute towards. Zoe and Dora, it's a pleasure to have you joining USI today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, listen, where do we start other than big, big congratulations? I think it would be helpful if you just tell people what the last week has been like. I think crazy is an understatement. Do I start off with Athens Premier? Yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was crazy and it was very moving and very exciting for us. We had a huge turnout at the Benaki Museum where we held the, uh, the, the Athens Premier. And then two nights ago, on the 15th, and then two nights ago, we went to Thessaloniki, and we had the premiere there, where we also had a big turnout and um, a great response from the audience. Just uh, people, I was telling you earlier that this uh, documentary is about a case that happened about a year ago, and this brought back to the audience some really harsh memories of what happened, and people were very moved, you know, very, very um, uh, just, uh, uh, I mean, they had a, a sort of a, a big, um, I don't know, a, a very a, a reaction of of, um, of of just being stunned by events that they had, even though they had seen them. On, we had seen some of that on our TVs. The documentary revealed some things that had never been put together before in one place. And also, we had the the women's interviews that were very, very moving and um, just um, incredible. And, so yeah, it's been, it's been amazing, we're, and we're happy to keep to keep the screenings. We're going to have some more analysis, but Dora can talk about that. It was actually very interesting to see that this story, the the story of these women, who so these are a group of women who are HIV positive. They were arrested last year, just before the elections, as part of like wider group who was tested for HIV/AIDS, and those who were HIV positive were accused of seeking to spread the virus because they would allegedly be prostitutes and they were put in prison. There was a media circus around this. It was really a frenzy. We had that on our television screens every day. The people, uh, the, the journalists would have taglines to their shows like, oh, today we'll be showing you more pictures of those women who were arrested and who were spreading death. Um, and there was this frenzy just before the elections of May 2012, and then it stopped. It stopped because there were the elections, there were the elections results, there was going to be a second round of elections. So the whole story just completely dropped off the radar, and you very often have the impression that people in Greece had forgotten about this story. What was really impressive, I mean, one thing that the turnout shows is that people did not forget. It's just that there's so much going on that that star, the story dropped off the radar. But it doesn't mean that people forget it, forgot it. And people are still very, a lot of people seem to still be very angry about that. Another thing that was interesting was the type of people who came to the premiere. It was not only young activists and so on. You had people of all social classes, of all ages, of all the educational backgrounds who came to the premiere. And which was interesting in two ways. First, because of course, the one of the audiences that this documentary is trying to reach out to is those people who are not so politically active, who are getting their information from mainstream media and who would need to find out a few things about those media. But also, um, so that was one interesting aspect. But at the same time, because the Benaki Museum, for example, is this kind of upper middle class or even you would say posh place in Athens, it was interesting to see some people with a working class background coming there who wouldn't spontaneously come to an event in that place. So I think that in a sense this premiere was representative of some things that are happening in Greek society right now, some changes that are happening. And that is also a positive thing other than the reaction to the, to the documentary itself. Thanks for that response, ladies, and I also think that you're be being very bashful and and actually promoting the success where you've had some absolutely unbelievable turnouts in Athens and 
Thessalonica, which just proves the point, Dora, that you were mentioning, how this is reaching all demographics and different groups within society. And Walton and I have been very privileged to see the documentary already. And of course, we can testify to that completely. Now, I know that you're living a film director's lifestyle. You're in five-star hotels at the moment Very and all the rest of it, enjoying life. But all joking aside, tell us what's coming up over the next couple of weeks and including the documentary being shown in the UK. Well, we're going to have a screening tonight uh, in a place called the Erisos in northern Greece. It's an area of northern Greece where there's a lot of social tension because of a project to mine gold in the area by a mining company, a Canadian, a Canadian Greek consortium, basically. Uh, and in a sense, we think that this documentary, even though it doesn't relate to the situation that people here are facing, is going to to hit home on some things that have to do with police brutality, repression, etc. Then we're starting a series of screenings in a cinema in Athens on Sunday uh, for two weeks. The movie will be showing three times a week there. We're in the process of talking with different people in different I'm parts of the We're going to have the UK premiere um, soon. We'll make announcements about that soon. But we're also going to be screening, we're going to be having a Canadian premiere in Montreal um, at the end of October. There's, there's a uh, interest that came immediately, um, we, we, we were um, uh, 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 approached uh, very early on by um, a Canadian university because there's there's great interest in HIV criminalization in Canada because of, of that being a big issue there with a lot of prosecutions and uh, very strict laws about HIV. And we're hoping to screen in other countries as well. We know that this is this is going to, to go well in other countries. We're already getting some, you know, signals about about screenings elsewhere but the uk premiere is coming up so, so and get that ready. would be mid-october and hopefully in a very prestigious university of london so, excellent so excellent very pleased to hear that and we look forward to attending i think you made the point earlier about how the story of runes really touches something that's deeper within wider society that people can relate to and I think we cannot go in this conversation without mentioning what happened in Athens a couple of days ago with the death of Pavlos, an absolutely terrible, terrible tragedy. And we've seen events unfolding in Greece over the last 48 hours as a result of that brutal murder by people quite clearly, let's not beat about the bush here, associated and linked with Golden Dawn and we've seen their attempts to distance themselves which is absolutely scandalous but ladies could you just give us an update about the situation right now because from the UK it, th it appears that things are really really tense at the moment well they are uh, really really tense uh, we haven't had the chance to uh, uh, follow as closely as as would want to because we're kind of isolated here um, but um, yeah it seems that there is a the the political sort of context of all of this is that Golden Dawn has received uh, ha has been tolerated for too long and there has never been a kind of a, a clear um, uh, uh, decisive um, uh, stance on behalf of the government on um, the, uh, the, the the criminal behavior that's been going on for a very long time and, and, and targeting uh, migrants mostly. Um, but this was the first, as it's been described, the first murder of a Greek. And so that's sort of changed the landscape now and that's why it's on the news, which is in many ways very, very just shameful. But it is what it is and, and things are not going to be the same. In our, in our national conversation about Golden Dawn. Of course, there has been the typical sort of um, citizens to blame for all of this kind of, you know, um, uh, talk from, from a lot of the, the pundits and the, 
the people who appear on the TV panels, the same TV panels who, you know, expose the women that our documentary is about, by the way. But I think what's very interesting, I'll say this very briefly, is that in Greece, we have this, you know, um, police tactic of rounding up people. Uh, the, the women, uh, the HIV positive women who were rounded up um, in our documentary were uh, uh, diagnosed po HIV positive and forced to test it inside police station, but the police had actually rounded up hundreds of women uh, during those, those days in, in various police um, sweep operations. And so basically what happens is the police goes out in the street and sort of um, uh, t it targets people who look like they are uh, drug addicts, most of the women who weren't having uh, uh, drug users, or people who look like they are, they have not been born, they were not born in Greece, um, you know. Um, people the, of color, people, essentially. Essentially people of color. And wh when you think about this, and when you look at the stats, I mean, when you look at what Human Rights Watch has said about uh, Operation Xenius V as the, the big operation that started uh, in August 2012, where they also tested H people for HIV and arrested women there too. Um, you, you're looking at the numbers and it's stunning. I mean, they, they stopped counting at about 80,000 people or 85,000 people. Uh, seven months into this operation, they just couldn't keep up. And the people who were found to be undocumented migrants are about 6%. So what, when you look at this, I mean, it is basically a, a an operation that's 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 launched to just um, what's the expression? Just throw um, uh, the, the, smoke and mirrors, or there, it's just um, a, 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 an operation that 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 um, aims at um, an, an atmosphere, atmosphere of of, of, um, of of the police and the state being uh, active and protecting the Greek people and taking action, doing something. When you when you're looking at when you look at the the the, the murder of Pavlos, basically. I mean, they know where to find people who are extremely violent and who are going to attack um, innocent people and going to take these kinds of actions. And instead, for the past more than one year, they're rounding up thousands and thousands of, of people of color, of women who are obviously uh, sick and helpless and who have no, um, you know, no way of, of defending themselves. And, and I think, you know, this murder has, has shown in many ways that the police, they, they don't know what they're doing, and they're not, they're not there, they haven't been there to protect, to protect their citizens. I mean, there's, this is, the, the, all these operations are politically motivated, and this, this is revealed in our documentary in, in many ways. I'll, I'll let Dora um, say something. Uh, I, I'm sure, Andrew, that you saw uh, on a, a website called Borderline Reports, a text written by Augustin Zemakos, who is one of the people working with us on the documentary. Yeah. He published it today from Unfollow Magazine, and he published a text, uh, a doc, um, an article saying that the problem is not Golden Dawn, the problem is the political system. For me, it's just the fact that when you live in a country where the Minister of Health thinks of rounding up women in the street for testing them for HIV and then accusing them of being prostitutes in order to have a scapegoat. Or when you're in a country where the Ministry of Public Order thinks of a massive sweep operation against immigrants in order to remove those who are unwanted. Or all this sort of operation. Well, and when you're in a country where it has been known and documented with pictures and video that the police work hand in hand with some new Nazi thugs when they want to get rid of a demonstration. And nobody has ever done anything about that. Well, it's not surprising that one day all this is going, you know, the chickens are going to come home to roost. Absolutely. And that they're going to murder a musician, an anti fascist activist in the street in Athens for no good reason. There will be protests. But basic and the government are just going to try to pretend that it's not us well it's not true the problem is them golden dawn or what they are because they were given a free reign and the story that we narrate in ruins is one example of that sort of fascist ideology going mainstream when fascist ideology goes mainstream well the real nazis are winning ladies i think that's a very eloquent way of putting it and I think you know everybody can see the connections between 
Pavlos's murder and the story that is told in ruins. The connections are there for all to see. And I think if people have been able to see Aris's video at Infoward.org about the collaboration where the police are actually idly standing by as Golden Dawn thugs attack anti-fascists, then the connections are there for everybody to see. Ladies, I really just want to thank you for your conversation today and really to, on behalf of USI, congratulate you on the success already of Ruins and we look forward to this documentary going around the world to tell the human story of these women but the macro dimension of this about what the Greek state is actually involved in is there for all to see. If Kara stole ladies and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you and thank, thank you for supporting this project. Thank you for doing that. Thank, thank you. you.